Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael. Welcome back to IDB. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I want to talk about why I choose to stick with iPhone. So why am I making this video? Well, every single year a new Android phone comes out that has so many flashy features that the iPhone just can't even compete with. Like if you look at Android, they have folding phones and we're just years away from even seeing the first folding iPhone. So with all these flashy features on Android phones, why don't I just jump ship from Apple and go get an Android phone? Well, I have compiled a list that I'm gonna cover in this video of five reasons as to why I stick with iPhone. So let's go ahead and jump in right now and get started. So the first reason is software updates. So when you get an iPhone, you are guaranteed to be getting four to five years of software updates, which is just something that you don't get with the competition. So say for example, in 2017, you bought an iPhone 8. In the fall of 2022, you are still gonna be getting the latest iOS 16 software update. I can almost guarantee that an Android phone purchased at the same time in 2017 is not going to be getting the latest Android update come the fall. So why is this important? Well, you obviously want the latest software to get the latest features and the latest security, but also iPhones retain their value because of these software updates. Everyone knows that iPhones have better resale value, and that's because an older iPhone can be updated to the latest software. And many people will say, I don't buy a phone just to sell it. Well, that doesn't really make sense because everything you buy in life is an investment. So you want it to hold its value as much as possible. And software updates is the main reason why iPhones hold their value a lot better than Android phones. So next up at number two is vibration and haptic feedback. So this may seem like a small topic to focus on, but it really does make a difference when you're interacting with your phone. So compared to Android phones that have a normal vibration motor, they just feel kind of loose and disconnected. The iPhones have a better version of a vibration motor called a Taptic Engine, and it really does make a difference. The Taptic Engine feels so much more integrated with the system on iPhone. So new in iOS 16, you can turn on haptic feedback when you're typing on the keyboard, which feels really nice. You also get haptic feedback with pretty much every interaction you have. So whether you're flipping the mute switch on the side of your phone or you're interacting with a toggle inside of Control Center, it really does make a difference. So one thing in iOS that I really like in particular with the haptic engine is when you're sending a full screen iMessage effect. So when you press and hold on the send button, I'll choose this heart effect because this one is really cool. So when you send this heart, it kind of fills up like a balloon. And when you're holding your phone in your hand when you send this, it feels like the Taptic Engine, the vibration kind of increases in intensity as the balloon fills up. And when you send it, you get some pretty cool sound and you also get, like I said, that haptic feedback in your hand. So it may seem like a very small thing to focus on, like I said, but when you get haptic feedback with every single interaction you have with your phone, it really does make a difference day to day. Next up at number three is the photo and video experience. So first up is I use iCloud Photo Library to manage all of my photos. I have over 10,000 photos and I think 2,000 videos managed in my iCloud Photo Library. And iCloud does such a good job at managing all your photos as you can see here. Uh, I've been storing my photos in iCloud since uh, 2010 here as you can see. I also like the memories feature. So iCloud does such a good job at pulling out certain photos that it thinks matters to you. And you get some really cool memories here inside of iCloud photos as well. Also coming in iOS 16, something I really appreciate is iCloud shared photo library. So if you have some photos in your library that you want shared with your family, you're able to now have a completely separate iCloud photo library that is shared with your friends and family. And another reason in terms of the camera is third-party applications. So whenever you're using an application like Snapchat or Instagram, on an iPhone, it just feels like the quality is so much better. Uh, you may have seen those complaints online about people using an Android phone uh, when they open up Instagram or Snapchat, the camera quality is just awful. So whatever integration Apple has used in terms of third-party camera access is just far superior on iOS compared to Android. So last up in terms of the photos and camera experience is video recording. So iPhone video recording is just the best. There's literally no argument. Uh, iPhones take far superior video. When it comes to still photos, you may argue that a photo taken on another Samsung phone, for example, may look better than the photo taken on the iPhone. Uh, they're very similar in terms of quality. But for video, it's not even a competition, like I said. iPhones just take better video, that's it, period. 
Uh, I don't know if it's the bitrate or the codec, uh, but videos on the iPhone just look so much better. The quality is better. They're better in low light. Uh, there's less noise. And also on the iPhone, you get HDR Dolby Vision recording, which when you're viewing it on an OLED display, it looks so much better. So if you care about video, which I do a lot, uh, the iPhone is just far superior and it doesn't even compete with Android. So next up is battery life. Now this one could be argued, but I find that iPhone battery life is a lot better than Android phones in my opinion. So even here on my iPhone 13 mini, my battery life is very usable. This thing can easily make it through a full day and I don't need to charge it in the middle of the day. Uh, one thing in particular in terms of battery life that is important is battery drain when your phone is just sitting and you're not using it. So when I had my last Android phone, if I would put it down on the table at 80% and not use it for an hour, when I would pick it up, the phone would be at 70%. So it just lost 10% of battery for some reason when I wasn't even using it. And that's because it just isn't really optimized as well. And there's so many operations going on in the background that are killing the battery. On the iPhone, if I put my iPhone down on the table at 80%, in an hour when I pick it up, it's probably gonna be at 79 or 78%. So the battery drain on the iPhone is just so much better managed, especially when you're not using it. And finally, to wrap up here, the final reason why I stick with iPhone, you're probably tired of me saying it, is the ecosystem. So the iPhone is so interconnected with every other Apple product, and the more Apple products you have, the better they all work together. I have a whole list here of things that keep me in the Apple ecosystem. Uh, first up is the Apple Watch. I use my Apple Watch every single day. This thing never comes off my wrist. I love how it works. I track my workouts with it. I track my sleep. I pretty much do everything on my Apple Watch. Uh, next up is Apple Pay. I use Apple Pay every single day, especially on my Apple Watch. It's extremely useful to not have to take my wallet out of my pocket when I have to pay. Next up with the Apple ecosystem is iMessage. Now, a lot of people will say that iMessage is really only used in North America. Well, I live in North America. I'm in Canada. So everybody here that has an iPhone uses iMessage, and it's really convenient to message people with iMessage instead of normal SMS texting. Also linked in with iMessage is FaceTime. I don't use FaceTime as much as iMessage, but it really is useful, especially FaceTime audio. If you don't have a good cell connection, but you still wanna make a phone call, FaceTime audio is very useful. Next up for the Apple ecosystem is MagSafe. So you can see I'm using a MagSafe mount right here for this video. I also have a MagSafe vent mount in my car, and I also have a MagSafe wallet that goes on the back of my iPhone. So MagSafe is extremely useful and the amount of MagSafe accessories is growing every single year. And finally with the Apple ecosystem is the music and headphone experience. So with AirPods, as soon as I open up the case and put them in my ear, they connect automatically to my iPhone. And also Apple Music is probably the best music streaming service I use. I get a student discount, so at $4.99 a month, it's probably the best price streaming service as well. Also the UI is superior than every other streaming service out there. And also I like the features that you get inside of Apple Music. Uh, such as the time synced lyrics, and you also get access to lossless music as well. So now I wanna hear from you guys. Make sure to head down into the comments and tell me what is one reason why you stick with iPhone that I didn't cover in this video. Uh, maybe for you, it's a certain application from the App Store that's only available on iPhone. So make sure to comment. I love hearing what you guys have to say. So if you guys found this video interesting or helpful, make sure to drop a like on it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned to the channel for more content. My name is Michael with IDB, and I'll see you next time.